Hello everybody, this is Zubal Puroit and you are watching my YouTube channel. My dear friends, in this particular video, as you can check it out, we are going to discuss about uh, titrimetric de determination. It's volumetric, that means, of a mixture containing oxalic acid and potassium oxalate. So my dear friends, as usual, first of all, I am going to explain you about the theory behind this particular experiment and then I'll discuss about the procedure. Now, when we start with the theory process, now this is a mixture. Mixture means at least containing two components. Again, we are having here two components, which are those oxalic acid and potassium oxalate. Now, when we talk about oxalic acid, my dear friends, H2C2O4, we also write it down as COOH like this okay now when this is being treated with K2C2O4 okay because it is along with the potassium salt of oxalic acid that means the H is replaced by a metal ion so whenever the H plus ions of a carboxylic acid or of a simple mineral acid being replaced by a metal ion we call it as its salt so now when I'm having an oxalic acid and potassium oxalate together present now, when I am going to treat this with a strong base, say for example NaOH, okay, I am going to treat this with what? NaOH, this is a strong base. So what happens is, the only, the H plus ions of the oxalic acid, okay, I just write down here in short OA, so that is oxalic acid, this is going to be potassium oxalate, so only the H plus ions of the oxalic acid is going to be neutralized with NaOH. That means, in other words, it's simple acid-base reaction taking place. That means potassium oxalate is not involved in the reaction with NaOH. Alright? So, I want the individual composition of oxalic acid as well as potassium oxalate. So that is not going to solve the purpose, the entire purpose. Of course, partially it is going to. So that means I am in a position to determine what is the composition of oxalic acid present in the mixture by titrating it against NaOH. Okay, so this is the first part of the titration. We also need to go for the second part of the titration. Now in the second part what happens is, we are going to take k -mena 4 We are going to consider what? k -mena 4 now it's an oxidizing agent okay it is an oxidizing agent i won't write down oa because you will be getting confused with the oa of oxidizing agent and the oa of oxalic acid so i write down the entire one so kmno 4 bs is an oxidizing agent in presence of an acidic medium that is h2so4 sulfuric acid now what happens is that when i talk about a mixture you understand what is the meaning of a mixture is? Yes, it's containing the oxalic acid and the potassium oxalate. So when this mixture is being titrated with k 4 in presence of H2SO4, then what happens is, in this case, the K2C2O4 gets oxidized to H2C2O4. Okay? And then they are being titrated with, or they are being reacting with, the nascent oxygen which is being furnished by k 4 because as I said k 4 is an oxidizing agent. So in other words when I carry out a reaction or a titration with k 4 I'm going to get the total concentration. Okay so now I'll just make it much more clear for you. With NaOH I'm going to get oxalic acid. With k 4 I am going to get both the oxalic acid as well as the potassium oxalate. You getting this? Every one of you? Okay. So, as a result of which, we, if you are going to subtract this from this, we get what? Potassium oxalate concentration. Okay. k 4 the reading with k 4 contributes to the total concentration. The reading with NaOH contributes only to the concentration of oxalic acid. So the difference between the two will give me the concentration of potassium oxalate present in the given mixture. 
Am I clear with this? Okay. Now, I'll give you some reactions also. What are the reactions taking place over here? And that is, first of all is, we are going to treat K2C2O4 with H2SO4, sulfuric acid, which is being added. And as a result of which, I'm going to get K2SO4 plus H2C2O4. This is oxalic acid. Okay. Next is, KMnO4, which is an oxidizing agent, always works in acidic medium. So it is treated with H2SO4, dilute sulfuric acid. So it is going to give you K2SO4, MnSO4, H2O and the nascent oxygen. This nascent oxygen is responsible for the oxidation of H2C2O4 which we are getting. So H2C2O4 plus oxygen. Now see my dear friends, which H2C2O4 I am talking about? Two of them. The H2C2O4 means oxalic acid which is originally already present in the mixture plus the H2SO4, H2C2O4 which I am getting from K2C2O4 due to its reaction with sulfuric acid. You getting me everyone? Okay, once again I repeat. This oxalic acid, what it is referring to? The oxalic acid which is originally present in the mixture plus the oxalic acid which I am getting due to the oxidation of K2C2O4 with H2SO4 and that is this. Okay, so this H2C2O4 is being treated with the nascent oxygen which I'm getting over here and we get H2O as well as CO2. Alright, and then one more reaction. These are the reactions which are taking place when am I carrying out the titration with KNO4. Okay, when I'm carrying out the titration with NaOH, the reaction is very simple. As I said, when reaction is taking place with NOH, only the H plus ions of the oxalic acid is going to react. Okay, this is not going to enter into the reaction. So, only the reaction is between oxalic acid and NOH. So, we have H2C2O4 which is originally present in the mixture. That is going to be treated with NOH resulting in the formation of sodium oxalate that is Na2C2O4 and plus H2O. So it's a simple acid base reaction, okay, where acid and base reacts to give you salt and water, okay. Now see my dear friends, when we are talking about a volumetric estimation, when you are talking about titration, so apart from the solution in the conical flask, the solution in the burette, we also require an indicator, okay, which will indicate the end of the reaction generally through visible changes. So. Here we have two parts of titration. One part where NaOH is going to be used in the buret. The second part where KMnO4 is used in the buret. Now whenever KMnO4 is used in the buret, we don't need to add an external indicator because KMnO4 itself is a self-indicator. Okay, it is pH sensitive. So with the change in the pH, it is going to show the change in the color. And in this way, it is going to indicate the completion of the reaction. So therefore, we say KMnO4 is a self-indicator. Now coming to uh, titration where we are going to use NaOH, so then we are going to use phenolphthalein as an indicator. Okay, so with NaOH, the indicator that is going to be used is phenolphthalein. And here I will say self-indicator. Okay, it is going to be what? A self-indicator. So this is my dear friends, about the theory and the reactions which are actually taking place in this particular experiment. So please have a look at it and see whether you have understood this completely. Yes, my dear friends, now we will proceed towards the procedure part, how we need to carry out, both the parts I will explain you. Part 1 is with respect to NOH. So what we do is, first point is, given solution of the mixture 
I hope you understand this very well. Oxalic acid as well as potassium oxalate. So the given solution of the mixture is being diluted to 100 cm cube in a standard measuring flask. All right. I guess it's very easy using, of course, distilled water. Point number two. We need to prepare out 10 cm cube of the diluted solution. in a CF. I hope you understand this very well. That is CF. That is point number two. Point number three is and that is two drops of phenolphthalein indicator has to be added and the solution is going to remain colorless because you are adding two drops of phenolphthalein where okay into oxalic acid okay and phenolphthalein in the acidic medium is going to be what colorless it's not sensitive too much okay in the acidic medium next is after that what we do is titrate against 0 0.1 normal NaOH which is obviously a butyl solution and the end point will be colorless to pink okay so these are the four parts once again I repeat given solution containing a mixture of oxalic acid and potassium oxalate is being diluted to 100 cm cube in a standard measuring flask. Next thing is prepare out 10 ml of that. Okay, in a conical flask. Next, add two drops of phenolphthalein indicator. The solution still remains colorless. And then you titrate it against 0.1 normal NaOH from the burette. And then white is going to be colorless to pink. So this part one, which is with respect to NaOH, so you understood very well. I've already explained this in the theory you are going to get the concentration of only and only oxalic acid. Alright? I hope so far comfortable. We are now going to part 2. Okay, so I hope you understood part 2 now when we talk about. So it is obviously with respect to k 4 So in part 2, first step remains the same and that is the given solution which is obviously the mixture diluted to 100 cm cube with distilled water in a standard measuring flask okay second step now what we are going to do is prepare 10 cm cube of the diluted solution in a conical flask plus we are now going to add around two test tubes of dilute H2SO4 okay once again I repeat into the conical flask we are going to add about two test tubes of dilute H2SO4 and you are going to heat it on a wire gauze Temperature will be somewhere around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, till vapors are coming out of it. Okay, don't ask your instructor that please give us a thermometer. No, not required. Am I clear with this? Till the vapors are coming out. Because see, whenever we talk about KMnO4, it is an oxidizing agent and it works where? When the solution is warm, hot, it's not boiling, okay, it's warm solution and in an acidic medium. Okay, then it works very well. So for the acidic medium, we have used sulfuric acid and we are just going to warm the solution to 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. You can just see the vapors coming out of the conical flask. Okay, now what you do is titrate the hot solution. Please be very clear, don't 
keep it for cooling. Okay, if you want to titrate the cold solution only, then why you are heating it? Okay, it's just a common sense. So titrate this hot solution versus 0.1 normal KVNO4 from the obviously it is burette. Okay, from the burette. Here it was what? 0.1 normal NaOH was there in the burette. Here you are going to change the burette. So please make sure that when you change the solutions in the burette, you please rinse that burette. Okay, plus first wash it very well and then rinse the burette. Alright, so titrate the hot solution. Of course, which hot solution I am talking about? CF, conical flask. Against 0.1 normal KMnO4, okay, which is going to be from the burette, drop by drop, and end point is going to be the same. It's going to be colorless to permanent pink, I will say. Okay, permanent pink. Because many times what happens is, as you add KMnO4, because KMnO4 is also purple in color. So when KMnO4 comes in contact with the hot solution of the conical flask, then what happens is you can see the pink coloration develop. But as you know very well, the technique you know very well, that as you're going to add the solution from the burette, all right, and then you're going to continuously keep on shaking the conical flask. So once you shake the conical flask, the pink color disappears. So you have to continue the addition of KMnO4 from the burette till even after shaking also, the pink color remains. Okay, so that is why I said it is permanent pink. All right, so my dear friends, this is part two. And the reading which I get over here will correspond to the total amount as I've already explained you in the theory. Total amount means what? Oxalic acid as well as potassium oxalate. The reading which I'm going to get over here is going to only correspond to oxalic acid. Okay, you're going to repeat the procedure two times more. That means total three readings over here. Total three readings over here. Here, out of the three, two has to be constant. Same way over here also, out of the three, two has to be what? Constant. So this is my dear friends about the procedure behind the determination of a mixture containing oxalic acid and potassium oxalate using a titrary metric method. So I hope everybody has understood this experiment very well. Thank you for joining me. Till then, we meet next time with some another video. I wish you all a very good luck. Wish you a very happy journey towards your chemistry life and take care. Bye-bye.